broadcasting. So you, you, you get your, your job in, in that world that you mentioned, presumably that led on to certain things in broadcasting. Was there, what was the path? Where did that side of things come on your radar? I love it when it's explained like that. It sounds so simple. Yeah. <laughs> and I wish so it had not. been. <laughs> so um, basically I um, started off in social media and comms and went to the Olympic games in 2012 with World Rowing Federation. And like a London 2012 Olympic games as one of, as the first games, first of all, was insane. Like a home Olympics is bucket list stuff anyway. Uh, to do it when I was 21, 22, I was like, this is wild. And so um, what I was there and I loved it, but what I was watching was those broadcasting journalists, reporters, presenters. And I, all I could think was that I, that I want that to be me. I, yeah. That's what I want to be doing. And so um, after... 2012, both the Olympics and the Paralympics. I left the World Rowing Federation, came home and did two years working on a um, on the regional sports desk here in Gloucestershire, um, at the Gloucestershire Echo and Citizen, and learnt so much. My goodness me, working for a sports desk, only female on a desk, proper grassroots sport as well. We're talking like schoolboy rugby, schoolgirl netball, the grassroots rugby, you know, the local leagues, kind of like five leagues down from the Prem. I was covering all of that every Saturday, but I learned so much doing that. And obviously equally learned a huge amount. My reporting came on leaps and bounds, writing stories, how to write for newspapers. That was a skill set. I learned and, and that's still a skill set that I use now in how I write intros or how I script questions for sure. But what I wanted to be doing was what I'm doing now. And it was about finding a way into that. And yeah. I, I wasn't, I didn't have a clue. I really didn't have a clue how I was going to do it. Um, what I started doing on the side as freelance projects was sport presentation. So um, when you go to a big sports event, for example, you'll see the big screens, you'll see um, the announcers, the hosts, all of that. I started off presenting there okay. and that's one of like the best grounds to learn because you can make all your mistakes. Um, obviously it matters and it matters deeply. I remember being so, so nervous, but you are making your mistakes in front of a live audience. Nothing's really filmed and captured for everyone to laugh at for years to come. You, you learn a huge amount because you're in a very, very live environment. You have a gallery talking to you as well. So you have feedback, you have comms. So you're already thrust into a live environment. And that's how I learned um, presenting and started getting my opportunities within uh, netball, both um, junior world and then Commonwealth Games as the stadium presenter. And once I started doing bits of this on the side of working at the newspaper, I so quickly got the bug and thought, I have to make this my reality, my nine to five. Well, it's not nine to five. <laughs> Freelancing is not yeah. nine to five, but I have to make it somehow my my life. And And so I basically quit the newspaper <laughs> with about one client um I earned about 40 pounds in my first month gotta start know? somewhere yeah and I think the amount I earned I'd actually spent in petrol getting to the football <laughs> ground anyway um and then basically yeah from there it kind of just snowballs I started off working mostly in cycling and bit by bit you get more and more opportunities coming your way um word of mouth is important doing a good job somewhere else someone recommending you and picking you up um, and that was sort of work mostly in cycling through to 2019 when rugby and then motorsport came knocking. And motorsport has, has continued to be um, a growing area for you. You've done Extreme E and, and many of our listeners will know you most from F1 TV. For those that, for whatever reason, don't know F1 TV or haven't experienced it yet, just give us the elevator pitch. What What is it? So F1 TV is... Formula One, F1's own channel. So all of the YouTube content, the Instagram, um, the uh, that all that content we can generate as well. So we will um, present bits and bobs that go onto there. But F1 TV itself is a subscription app. So kind of like your Sky Sports or your BT Sport or whatever, you, you pay a monthly amount for and you will get basically every single thing you want to know about Formula One from this app. So you get all the onboards, you get exclusive camera angles, you get telemetry, you get the um, race radios, you get the pitch out, you get everything you could possibly want. And you also get shows that are pre and post sessions um, presented by the likes of me, Will Buxton, Lawrence Barreto, and so on. 
So, so good. And, yeah, and, it's, it's amazing. And nice people to work with. And we know Lawrence mm. and we, we've had Will on the show as well. And um, amazing. he's also a man of many talents. So we've got, you've got oh, you, you and your yeah. acting. We've got Lawrence and his squash. And Will is an incredible artist. And he's a musician as well. I was right? going to say, I thought, I thought you were going to yeah. say musician. But yeah, no, yeah, he's yeah. amazing. He's so, Will is so multifaceted and so talented. And he has so many deep passions in, in a variety of areas. I mean, I said earlier on that I'm all or nothing. My God, that man is all in on some on things. You know, he can't just like the Beatles or, he, or like Oasis. He will be like deep into the archives of, of whatever else. It's his knowledge across so many subjects is amazing. I think he'd be the perfect pub quiz yeah. teammate for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Far better than me. He is, yeah, he's amazing. He's super, super talented across so many aspects, not least Formula One and presenting. And he's a wonderful co-host. He is. And and he's a character, isn't he? And he's got, yeah. he, he, he's got an interesting voice and he's got, he's got his own unique way of, of putting across a message on screen. And uh, yeah, I like him. I'm a, I'm a fan. I think it's a good, good bunch. It's a good group. Now Thank cast you. your, you, you, you've built up all this experience over the years and we've sort of gone through your trajectory there. And, and it, when you're talking through it like that, like, like you said, it always sounds simpler than it is, mm -hmm. but, but there's a lot of people that listen to this who are um, either content creators that want to get into broadcasting or want to be presenters what what advice can you give to people who are maybe 18 years old thinking i just don't know where to turn and there are tools at their disposal but you know if you don't know you don't know do you so For what sure. what sort of pearls of wisdom can you give people who are just sitting there lost thinking i can i know i can do that job i just don't know where to turn yeah i it's one of the the uh, most asked questions i get uh, on instagram and in my dms and i wish i could, re could reply to everybody because i think one thing it's it's almost a cop out of an answer, but it's equally, uh, I hope, promising is that there are so many different pathways. There's no set route that only a certain number of people or a certain type of person can go down. There are so many different routes in to getting into where, into presenting, into broadcasting. I went down a route in which I did four years of experience in different areas and then on the job at the newspaper, I also did a degree in sports journalism as well, a qualification. And so that taught me an enormous amount. And I think that will pay dividends for the rest of my career now. So I would certainly say if you are in, if you are able to find a course, to find a course, a degree, find a college, find a university in which you can get a qualification, be it in broadcast journalism, sports journalism specifically, that is one of the surefire, surefire ways to get started on the path because you won't necessarily, um, you know, be offered a job right at the end of it, but you are going to make so many contacts throughout that time. You're going to be doing work experience. You're going to be meeting local people. You're going to be meeting radio stations, television stations. And that is, that is invaluable. And I, I actually wish looking back that I had gone down that as a route for university instead of doing English because English was lovely. <laughs> But it doesn't necessarily give you a job at the end of it. And I think now yeah. that university is so much more expensive and, you know, we've got social media at our hands all the time as well. People can get so far ahead in, in different ways. So I think going for a degree initially, as soon as you know what you want is is really crucial. If you can, and I appreciate not everyone has the means to. Absolutely. I would then look at doing work experience again, if you have the means to, I did plenty of work experience, um, you know, and I, nobody should work for free, but it is, it is a part of this industry in which you do go along, be it sort of through school or through a college and you work at your local newspaper or radio station or, or television station and pick up bits of experience that way too. Um, I think so many people say to me, I want to work in Formula One and I never started off working at the very top of, of any sport at all you know i started off my first job was in the under 16 national netball finals announcing so i started off so small to me at the time that felt like my olympic games that felt like my silverstone you know that was such a big deal to be working and i think while it's amazing to have a goal in mind right at the very pinnacle of what you want to be doing very few people are going to make it straight there and i remember one person once saying to me don't be impatient to get to where you want to get, because if you get there too soon and you don't do a good enough job or you're not ready, 
you won't go back because people will remember that you're not good enough. Yeah. And I found that really, now looking back, I find that really valuable advice that you will get to where you want to be, but you have to do it in time and you have to have the experience to do so. I think gathering ex as much experience as you can, working across different sports, broadening your knowledge, your skill set is so important. So while you may not want to be doing editing, for example, or be in the gallery or be writing, you want to be presenting, I did all of those different things because I wanted to have an understanding of what it takes to be a broadcaster in the widest and most holistic sense of the word. So I think yeah. make sure you broaden your horizons as much as you can. Yes, keep F1 in mind, but start small. Go to, you know, here in Gloucestershire, we've got the Prescott Hill Climb. So if I'd been 16 years old wanting to get into motorsport, I'd have gone up there and said, I want to write a report on this for the paper for the weekend. You know, speak yeah. to your local newspaper, speak to your radio stations put yourselves out there. And I think nowadays as well, I sound so old saying nowadays kids have got, but of course this next generation have got the world at their actual fingertips. You've got TikTok, you've got Instagram, you've got YouTube as a means to have a constant moving, working CV for yourselves. And I think mm. that's an amazing thing. So use that, but also build up all the experience around it as well and your skill set too.